Welcome. In today's lesson, we will be learning the how of programming by reviewing code examples that demonstrate how dictionaries work. We're going to talk about some of the most common use cases and methods, the basics of creating dictionaries, how to display the keys and values that are inside of them, how to retrieve keys and values, sort dictionaries, insert new elements, and of course, remove things that we don't want. Then we're going to talk about loops, something that we're not going to cover in detail here, but there's some very powerful ways dictionaries can be combined with loops, and I want to give you the first overview of what to expect in some of the later videos and how the power of the two can be put together. And then finally, we're gonna talk about default dict. Now this is a special package that we can bring in that mimics most of the dictionary functionality, but also adds a few more elements that can be useful. So get ready for a good time with dictionaries. Let's start with the dictionary basics, creating an empty dictionary. Now we use the curly brackets, which is very similar to sets. So let me show you the main difference here is really in how we structure the data that's inside. So we use curly brackets for a set and we use in the example of strings here, we'll make the first element and then we'll use a comma and then the second element. But with dictionaries, we have to have a colon between the two instead of the comma. So we, if we actually wanted two dictionary elements, it would need to be two pairs. For example, something like this. That would be the equivalent of two items inside of the dictionary, whereas each item has a key and a value. So since they both use curly brackets, here's my question. What type is this variable gonna be? A set or a dictionary, since we haven't specified anything with our format? Got your guess in hand? It's a dictionary. Not really sure why, but that's just the default that they use. So in fact, if you actually wanted an empty set, you would have to do something like that, where you created an empty bracket and then typecast it into the set type. The basics are the colon and the comma pattern inside of the brackets. Next, let's look at some ways we can display dictionaries because there's two elements, both the key and the value. There's a few different ways we can actually display them also. So let's start by making a dictionary that we can play around with. It's called Hogwarts and it has the names of some of the Harry Potter characters and then after the colon, it has the house that they belong to. Hermione is at Gryffindor and Hannah is at Hufflepuff and of course Penelope and Ravenclaw. Nobody likes Penelope. Now, just like we print all variables, we can simply do Hogwarts to see the entire pair. So we can see the key and the value. Now, another way that we can display the key and the value is by using this method called items. There's some more functionality with items, but nothing that we're gonna worry about now. So most importantly, if you only want the keys or the values, we have separate methods for those. So Hogwarts.keys is gonna return just the three people. And then hogwarts.values is going to return just the three houses. So a few different ways to display those there. Now let's talk about retrieving elements out of dictionaries. This is something that comes up a lot. So we're gonna create a new Pokemon dictionary here. And one of the main methods we can use is this dot get method. And the method requires one argument that we must pass. And this pass is going to be the key for the value that we want returned. So we have to pass in either a string or number that matches one of the keys here. So you can see we have Arbok in here. We have Arbok right there. So we would expect it to return the value. Like in a real life dictionary, this would be like looking up the word here and then getting the definition back. When we run this, we will get 14. Now it doesn't work the other way. We can't put in the value and then get back the key. It doesn't work that way. Now there's also a shorthand. Without using the method dot get, we can use our slicing. If you remember earlier, we had the two brackets and they were put right up against the variable here. And we can do the very same thing. So we need to pass in the key, which we have right here, and it will return the matching value, 89. You can see that we have 14 or 89. So now let's look at a second argument that the get method can actually take. And that is a return value if nothing is found. So in this case, we're gonna look for Jerku. Oh, Jerkaku, yeah, that's right. <laughs> kind of like Pikachu, but a jerk version. In this argument, we're saying, look through my dictionary and if you find Jerkachu, then return it. And if not return, Pokemon not found. So in this case, we know that Jerkachu is not Ivasaur or Pikachu, Airbok or Jigglypuff. So when we run it, we will get Pokemon not found. 
So now let's talk about sorting a dictionary, because inherently dictionaries are not stored in a sequential order like a list, but there are functions that we can wrap around them to get some of the functionality that we need. So let's go ahead and create a new Hogwarts dictionary with some of the characters and the houses that they're from. And then let's sort them. So first, we know the items is going to return both the key and the value. So when we sort these, we get everything returned and sorted by the key. It uses the key first. So we have HA and then HE and then the letter P. And then we can also specifically say sort it by the keys and only return the keys. And then we'll have the same thing, but we won't have the values returned also. And of course, we have the dot values method, and we can run that before using the sorted function and get a similar result, but this time sorted on values. So you can see that can be a great way to actually sort out your dictionaries when the need arises. Now let's talk about inserting new items into a dictionary, new key value pairs. Let's start with our Pokemon dictionary here. We have our Pokemon and the level that they're at. Ivasaur is at 89 and Pikachu is at 11 and Arbok is at 14 and then Jigglypuff is over there at 51. So now I want to add two new Pokemon. My first one is Professor X, and he is at level 34, and my second one is the Joker. Now, we specify the new item in the same way we would slice out one of the values based on key, except we add a new one. So Professor X does not exist in the dictionary at all right now. This would normally cause a key value error, except we have an assignment variable here, and we're also giving it a value. When we run these, you can see that both the Joker and the Professor X have been added to our poke dictionary right and there we go now joker and professor x have both been added as keys and values so our dictionary is growing now let's talk about what we do when our dictionary gets too big and we need to remove something Removing key value pairs from dictionaries can be pretty easy. So let's go ahead and make another dictionary with poke just to remind ourselves what we have and reset it. And then we simply use the DEL keyword and the same way we would slice an item out hoping to get a return value, we just put del the keyword before it and then all of a sudden poke jigglypuff is gone. Now we just have Arbok, Ivasaur, and Pikachu. Another way that we can actually clear an entire dictionary is by using a method that all dictionaries have called clear. And when we do this, we end up with a dictionary of nothing. And that is removing items from a dictionary. Now that we have an understanding of the basic ways we can work with the dictionary, I want to talk about what we can do when we combine them with the powers of loops. Now, loops are an entire lesson that we're going to talk about in the section on recursion. So I don't want you to look at this and think it's stuff that you should know, but maybe take a more relaxed attitude towards this loop section. Just see some of the things that we can actually do with the dictionary when it comes to nesting and looping. But just to go kind of quickly over this, the same way we had the Hogwarts.keys and we could display the keys out, we can actually specify something called for and say for i in Hogwarts key. And this is saying for the index or whatever character string we want to put here, for i or whatever variable we choose to put here, for i in Hogwarts keys. And we can actually print the keys. So we can just print the keys out. Now we also can do the same with values, and then this variable i will become not the keys, but the values. And we can also specify both a key and value. So remember, these are just variables. We can choose them to be anything we want. And here we can actually combine the two together for a custom combination. That way we can actually have a couple variables here that can be used together in all sorts of combinations using the dot keys, the dot values, and the dot items. Now, like I said, you don't really need to know this right now, but the reason I put them here is because I think someday you might want to come back to these videos and this seems like the most logical section to keep some of this stuff. So just like we were sorting things before by printing them out with the keys and values and then wrapping them in the sort function, we can also do that with loops. A little bit more complicated, but sometimes there can be more places where we can add new logic. So there can be reasons for it, but just so you see, it's the same thing. We're, we're organizing by keys, but here we're using some different logic to organize it, but just another way to do it, just for your reference for later. So now something you should pay attention to again, the default dictionary. I want to talk about the default dict. It's a different type that we can bring in using a package. And the reason why it can be so powerful is because it allows us to specify some logic saying, if you get a key and you're not passed a value, instead of throwing an error, just use this as a default. And this makes it really powerful for quickly appending items into it that aren't 
completely validated ahead of time. So I'll show you with an example here. So we're going to create a dictionary, and this is just a blank dictionary, has nothing in it, and then I'm going to slice to the third value. Now there is no third value, so we are going to get a key error. However, in some situations, maybe instead of throwing back an error saying this doesn't exist, we want it to automatically make something, and something the same for all of the keys that are passed in without values. That is where the default dict comes into play. So from collections, we have to import default dict first, just like we do with a lot of our packages. And then we have to actually create a type, an object that is a default dict type. And the most important parameter here is this, where we say int. So what we're saying is in this special dictionary, if somebody calls a key that's not there, automatically use an integer as the value pair. For example, now in some dict, it's also blank. So this new dictionary we have, some dict, it is blank. And when we call the third value, we would get a key error if it was a regular dictionary, but in this situation, we get a zero. No matter what number we put in here, it's gonna automatically put an integer. Now that's really cool because then maybe we wanna do some kind of math, maybe you wanna build some kind of a you know, giant dictionary that has zeros for all the values that aren't filled in, but then numbers in other parts or we can even put in other types. So here we can try putting a string in, and when we run it, we are gonna get a blank string in return. So now the dictionary actually has a key of four with a string value after it. And you'll see in our applications play video, there's some really cool ways to make hierarchical trees or APIs and some things, some, some kind of more complicated things, but it's nice to not get an error thrown back at you, but just have some kind of a default parameter that the dictionary knows that it should have if it gets incomplete information. So that's it. You are now up on dictionaries. Thanks for dicking around with me. Subscribe to the Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.